years ago. I'm gonna burp. <laughs> years ago, VHS tapes existed, which was before DVDs, long before Netflix became just a digital platform. Netflix, when it first started, was a DVD subscription. They would mail them to you. It wasn't that long ago. But Netflix became entirely digital. I worked at a place that molded DVDs. And basically, I got laid off because they were going out of business. I worked in the data sample. So I was like telling them, like, this is what's going to become the future. And they were like, yes, Andy, but we're a physical media company. So basically, if we opened up the copyright and just made it all digital, we wouldn't need to be here. And I'm like, well, we're not going to be here. And that's what ended up happening. There was like such a limited staff kept on for things that like had stricter copyright, but they sent everything else to other countries that didn't have the copyright. And then they finally just laxed and now everything is digital. But years before that, VHS existed. I never had a Betamax, <laughs> but Betamax was another kind of uh, physical media. It was very much another kind of tape. The point. There was a making of of the original Star Wars trilogy. The original Star Wars trilogy is not the prequel trilogy, and it's not the postquel. I don't know. Are they calling it postquel? The original Star Wars trilogy had an additional making of, and they used to advertise it with the VHS tapes that I still have. This was prior to the special edition releasing, I think in 1998. So this is going back to the 90s, the mid 90s. Because I remember it was called From Star Wars to Jedi. It was narrated by Mark Hamill. And it was showing some of the puppeteering and some of the industrial light and magic sound, you know, like sound sto studio and like the special effects that George Lucas created. It had an interview with him. It was a great, great making of. I used to really enjoy that stuff. I still kind of do, except, you know, now everything has become so digital that it's changed the way commentary really is for video making, movie making. But I remember when he was describing the original Star Wars story. This is Mark Hamill, he, but it was it was George Lucas' story. And in Star Wars to Jedi, this is the this is the reason that I'm making this video. In Star Wars to Jedi, he said, here is Star Wars Central Library. George Lucas was using as much technology as he could to really release an anti-technological theme. And it was in the scene where Luke is in the Death Star Trench and Vader shoots out R2-D2. And he says, I've lost R2. And he says, Star Wars Central Irony, Mark Hamill's narration. Star Wars is Central Irony. They used the technology that Industrial Light and Magic had to create at the time to preach an anti-technological theme. Because at that moment, Luke switches off his targeting computer, which was the computer that was doing that. And they said, Luke, your computer's off. What's wrong? And he says, nothing. I'm okay. And he hits that bullseye with the force, right? Well, we have reached the downfall of technology, in my opinion. Because now, we live in a world where without technology... Our teachers can't even teach their kids. Our parent-teacher association can't even communicate with the teachers. We have programs now that I can't even access. 
but I can't even get, I can't even get into them. I can't even do the proper stuff because we just have become so technological that we can't even teach these kids how to read without technology. How to pick up an actual book and read it. How to walk away from everything with a plug and just oh shoot, I just remembered I didn't lock the door. Oh well. We need to create an entirely untechnological part of school. Handwriting, my own handwriting, is failing. Because when we actually do write things down, we're expected to write so much that yet it becomes scribbles in books and everybody's like, why don't you just send me an email? Technology has given us a lot of beneficial things. But there is an anti-technological theme that needs to never be forgotten. Teaching kids how to read with this letter land that they're doing and the entire way that they've helped some of these kids, there are some kids that just don't have the kind they they're incredibly techy and they know the the story but they don't have that you give them a piece of paper and they have behaviors because they don't want to read they want to be able to click buttons they want their eyes all over the page they want to watch videos they want to just do what I'm doing right now, just have this thing stuck up to their face. So I'm using technology to preach an anti-technological theme. And this is why, once I realized my big problem with my video games, what it was really doing is it was, I, I was seeing it happen all around me. It wasn't just me. I was watching how, like, why is this the only way we can communicate anymore? We sit in the same room with people that we love and we don't even talk to them. We can't get away and then it's like, you know what, I'm too tired, I'm too tired. But it, I know that it was just too boring. It was just not techy enough. Like there was noise had to be had in the background. Or there, there had to be something in our hands. We just didn't feel like we were productive enough. We can't do a single thing a single time like I'm just gonna sit and talk and we're gonna we don't need the device we don't need it we're just gonna remember the, the I'll get to that when we get there like we don't even give ourselves enough time to go to the bathroom because we feel like bathroom time is unproductive really <laughs> you can't even relieve your bowels and just give yourself a few minutes and be like, I'll get to that when I get out. But if you're going to read a book while you're in there because you know it's going to take a little while, well, you're going to stimulate a part of your brain that I do not ever see being stimulated when you're even reading a Kindle book. It's just not the same part of your brain. How many times, I don't know if anybody else is like this, has anybody else been reading because I still read books I, I enjoy reading books I struggle with it oh wow that's nice is he going to let me go too thank you so have you ever touched a page on your book with like two fingers and tried to make it bigger so you could read it you know that's what happens when you start getting older and need like bifocals or I've tried to like take my finger on the page and try to scroll the page of the book down only to laugh at myself and realize wow I really have changed my brain I'm like the imaginary game that I play is a game is an imaginary game about a video game favorite game 50 
years ago, somebody's favorite game might have been stickball. years ago we were in the 80s no we were in the 70s crazy 